Let me start today by asking you a question. Why did you go to school? Was it to learn? To become a complete person? To reach your potential? To get a job? Does school do those things? And if not, why not? In this series, I'll be explaining the effects of schooling on a person and a culture, along with making suggestions for educating a new generation. By the end, if I succeed, you'll want to take your kids out of public school. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. The first two videos in this series are about how school affects us and why. I won't go into much detail about the history of school, mainly for time and partly because the history of the school varies with the country. But you can learn about the origins of the public school where you're from, who started it, and why. Like states, corporations, and other authoritarian institutions, norms of how school operates have spread around the world, and schools are pretty similar everywhere. So, while what I'm saying doesn't apply to every school everywhere in the world, it does apply to a huge number of schools and people who have gone through schooling. Most schools are set up and run by the state, that servant of the ruling class, and most schools that aren't state-run are modeled on the public school. The ruling class does not have your best interests at heart. How do they use school for their own purposes? How do they want to shape us? To understand what school does to a person, I think we should look at children before they go to school. What do they do? Run, scream, play, read, explore. They play with each other. They make up games and words, too. Do they always do what their parents tell them? No, and thank God for that. They love to ask why, which is a sign not only of curiosity, but of questioning authority. Without realizing it, children weigh the pros and cons of obedience to something they don't want to do versus punishment for doing what they want. Even little kids can think for themselves and act in their own interest. Then they go to school. School disciplines them. They go from a relatively free existence full of fresh air and exercise, questions, discovery, imagination, cooperation, involvement in the community, and making decisions for themselves, to a life of sitting down most of the day, listening to adults speak, following rules, following directions. Over the next few years, school will squeeze out of those children all their former impulses. They can still run and jump and play, but only when the adults say so, and only in the way they say. Their natural cooperative instincts get suppressed as they're introduced to competitive games. Besides, it's harder to feel free and happy when you're under constant pressure to do work to avoid punishment. They stop asking why. They stop asking anything other than permission. They can still discover things on their own or use their imagination, but only if they've done all their other schoolwork first. And for a lot of students, there is no time after schoolwork. And making decisions for themselves? Their entire lives are structured now. As they get older, kids naturally learn to do more and more for themselves. That's part of them becoming independent humans. School makes them dependent. It represses every occasion when their independence tries to reassert itself. Stop learning about what you want to learn about. We're learning about this and this only. Raise your hand and wait for permission to speak and move. If you haven't been given permission to speak and move, and you don't sit down and shut up immediately, you will be punished. 
What if a kid's so-called bad behavior is trying to tell us something about school? Why does school work so hard to squeeze our independence out of us? Probably because independent people might do something that upsets the social order. We can't have that. We teach kids that they have rights, like freedom of speech, but they obviously don't have any rights in institutional settings, regardless of wherever else they might. Authority says where we're allowed to have rights and where, say, for national security, good excuse, rights are too expensive for most of us to afford. So we get used to it in school, and then kids grow up and claim to believe in freedom, but tolerate or encourage the state or the corporation to take away other people's freedom for whatever reason. School is a great example, quite typical actually, of how you may have all kinds of rights and freedoms on paper, but in practice, you only have temporary privileges that can be revoked by authority for any reason it gives you. You can have freedom, or you can have authority, but you can't have both. Teachers aren't even really in a position to tolerate dissent and disobedience. They face all kinds of institutional constraints. Like, I've taught kids before, but I, I can't just let them do whatever they want. I can't even let them pursue their chosen learning paths. There's a curriculum. And if we don't do the curriculum, I don't get paid, and I get replaced by someone who will hammer it into them. So I need them to stop following their natural impulses, including their natural impulses to learn, because they're only allowed to learn about what I say when I say, and I force them to pay attention to me long enough for us to all hear the bell, sigh with relief, and go home. In fact, if any kids don't consistently fall in line, we're supposed to label them bad kids. They still have to be force-fed the curriculum, but they need to be broken down further. Have you read the book 1984? You should. The party, the state, it wouldn't just let rebels exist. It wouldn't even kill them. It insisted on breaking them down, breaking down everyone who is in any way unorthodox. We saw that world as a totalitarian nightmare, but it happens in school every day. Nowadays, there's less emphasis on physical discipline, but it's still there, under the surface. Just like the threat of force from police is enough to scare us, even when they're not around, the threats of various punishments always hang over the heads of children. In some parts of the world, teachers still hit the kids. In the U.S., they've outsourced that function to the police. So they have police in schools. You know, the same police who kill more than a thousand people a year. Thousands of kids have been led away from schools in handcuffs. And by the way, I'm talking about elementary schools. Google it. See for yourself. It's tragic. Others have been tasered. What kind of cold, unsympathetic person do you have to be to taser a child? And of course, the kids most har harshly punished are children of color. Of course. And, I mean, even the parents sometimes support this kind of violence against their own children because that's what they know. That's how many victims of school think. It's normal to use violence against someone, even a child, for not conforming. And for some kids, they've eliminated the need for punishment because they fill them up with Adderall and Ritalin. For those of you not from North America, those are drugs. Drugs from the parents and teachers who told you cannabis would lead to heroin. 
Think about the kind of pressure kids are under when millions of parents give their kids drugs because they want them to get good grades in elementary school. Even aside from all the freaky side effects of these drugs, parents are forcing their kids to conform to a shitty system. They shouldn't let their kids anywhere near the school system. But they were disciplined by it too. So first and foremost, school teaches us to obey and rely on authority. Listen to and follow the adult, whether they're right or wrong, whether you have other ideas or not, doesn't matter, because you're not important enough to have been consulted. You're just a kid. Even an adolescent. Your opinion doesn't matter. Authority makes the decisions for you. If you don't obey, if you don't conform to all the rules, however unnecessary or harmful to you, you will be punished. We grow up to expect the same thing from the police and our bosses. Thanks to school, the choice between conformity or punishment seems like a reasonable one. As part of learning complete dependence on authority, we come to think of authority as having a monopoly on answers, and thereby the truth. They don't ask kids what they think. They just feed them information and force them to remember. This process creates adults who have no idea what to do with themselves and have to beg corporations for jobs and beg our bosses for time off or more money or, in some cases, five-minute breaks. People spend their whole lives following the motions laid down by someone else because they don't look at their situation and their place in the world critically. Why do we need to beg for money and vacations? Why don't we create a world based on freedom and justice and, dare I say it, fun? Those questions don't even occur to most people. And what's so valuable we have to listen to every word? As part of its monopoly on truth, authority has a monopoly on value. It tells us which subjects we have to learn, which books and passages are classics and which are a waste of time, which interpretations are correct and which are wrong. It's not necessarily that we're not allowed to question things by reading outside what we're supposed to. It's that we don't know there's anything else out there. We're trained how to think. As children, we have the potential to learn to think for ourselves, to question everything. But school doesn't give us the chance to practice. A lot of school books even have sections that say critical thinking, but I rarely find anything in them to suggest actually questioning anything. What they usually mean is thinking the way the textbook writers want you to think, which is inevitably the typical nationalist line of thought. A generation of students who've adopted the ideology foisted on them in school can do anything. Look at the Cultural Revolution. Fifteen to twenty years after a whole generation was schooled in the Little Red Book, Mao had millions of foot soldiers to do his bidding. Or, for a more contemporary example, Americans who went to school can't recognize an act of mass murder by their own government and blame the most vulnerable people in society for their problems. We're trained to accept and believe in a world run as a hierarchy, as if power over people were something you could deserve, something you could earn through wisdom or hard work, and that poverty is just a question of poor character or insufficient schooling. We come to expect authority to hand out rewards and punishments, making us dependent on their approval, rather than judging value for ourselves. Again, this crushes our independent side. We're not good enough, not smart enough, didn't get high enough marks, or don't have the official certificates that say we're allowed to judge for ourselves. Are you an expert? No? Then who cares what you think? 
We believe experts should test and evaluate and judge us, and that's what our worth is based on. You got bad marks? There must be something wrong with you. Hey, let me ask you this. Where are the marks for imagination, self-reliance, judgment, critical thinking, fairness, and cooperation? There aren't any. So those vital things are not valued by the school, and thereby not particularly valued by the wider society either. We rely on expert opinion, expert arbitration, and see our own self-evaluation and our own decisions as probably worthless. Only the certified can judge. It's bad enough that we believe all those tests and evaluations are objective measures of anything, including intelligence. Along with our loss of autonomy, when we learn to believe in these tests, we learn to fear failure and fear the judgment of others who seem to know what they're talking about. And none of this is to mention how schools killed indigenous cultures in Canada, the US, and Australia. This isn't something I'm an expert on, but it is well documented. If you know a lot about it, would you be interested in coming on this channel in a future video? Write me a comment if you're interested. But from what I've read, these so-called residential schools, you can see the full power of the state on display. Destroying individuality through force, destroying entire cultures over time. School kills many of the qualities that make childhood the unique time of life it is. It squashes the curiosity out of us, as the only questions that matter anymore are the ones school makes us answer. It tears the adventurous spirit out of children who want to run around pursuing interests and challenges, but instead learn to sit at desks all day. School kills our senses of compassion and justice as we learn to judge and bully people instead of learning to sympathize with them. The student's total dependence on authority for directions and instructions leads to confused, scared adults. Well, that often happens to people who've been in jail for long stretches. Some people really seem to think kids need to have everything structured for them, or else they'll fail at life itself, whatever that would even mean, and that they'll somehow be able to run their own lives immediately after this 12 to 16 year process of turning them into a sheep. Because people believe all the myths about school, they don't blame the school system for any of its flaws. That's the same with prison, too, by the way. If you emerge from school unable to read or do math, it's your fault. It's a flaw in your character, something wrong with your brain. Couldn't be the school's. And yet, these students were given so little personal attention during their time at school, they could sit there in crisis for 12 years and never get proper help. Education should be tailored to the individual. We all have different strengths and weaknesses, and at least as importantly, different interests. School gives you a pile of things you have to learn and shames you if you don't learn them. Curriculum based on learning facts on top of facts is worthless in the era of Google. They need to learn to question what they hear and read and think, not memorize things out of a book. I would go so far as to say students should have the biggest role in designing their education. They should be initiating their own learning projects. Adults should have a limited role. I'll go into that more in part three on my video on how education should be. Letting children do what they want is a scary prospect for some parents and teachers because it's different from what they're used to. They're used to control. 
They expect to be in control of the curriculum, in control of the classroom, all students doing the same thing, no one talking when they're not supposed to talk, no one leaving the room without permission, and so on. But external control cripples the target of control. It turns children with unlimited potential into irresponsible, unthinking sheep. And most of them remain sheep for the rest of their lives. Can't we do a little better than that for the next generation? Thanks for listening, everyone. Please hit like if you liked this video, share it with people if you agree, comment if you disagree, and subscribe for more content like this every Saturday.